Hello, welcome to the News Tech Makers, a podcast where we talk about at scale application development, deployment, and management. Thanks for joining us today. This is Swapil Bhartia for the News Tech, and we are here at KubeCon Austin, Texas. Let's meet today's guest. I'm Bob Quillen, I'm the Vice President of Developer Relations at Oracle in the Container Native Application Development Group. And uh, yeah, so and our team is based here in, in Austin, and we have teams in Oakland and Seattle. Uh, um, I joined Oracle as part of the Stack Engine acquisition, uh, which happened about two years ago. And Stack Engine was a container management solution, uh, and for the last two years we've been actually part of the Oracle Cloud, uh, building out Docker management and Kubernetes container management capabilities. And the announcements today are kind of all part of that, that story, so. Uh, so, uh, when did you start exploring Kubernetes and why? Yeah, so, you know, we've been uh, in container management for, uh, you know, over two years now as part of Oracle. Um, the first product we put together was a Docker management product that did container management and, as a service. And as we kind of followed the, the market and talked to customers, they were looking for a broader set of orchestration capabilities. So earlier this year, we saw a huge upswell of interest around Kubernetes. Customers were looking for an open, uh, community-driven, cloud-neutral solution by which to run their orchestration and container management on top of. Um, CNCF selected Kubernetes as that, as that solution. Um, and people want this as a, you know, an integrated stack, and they want to avoid, in many ways, cloud lock-in. Uh, you know, most customers are using maybe a singular cloud a day and are getting worried about uh, that they're getting too tied into that cloud itself. CNCF and open source solutions, such as Kubernetes, uh, really give them an opportunity to run this anywhere they want to. Uh, give them the flexibility to run in multiple different clouds, run on-prem, and avoid the whole issue of being locked into a single cloud. Uh, and you know, we believe, and we've heard from customers, their mandate is keep it open, you know, keep it integrated in a, in a common stack, but make it something I could deploy in my enterprise to a large number of developers and a team. So. So the, the drive was uh, coming from the customers, you know, demanding, you know, something which is vendor neutral and, you know. Uh, recently, the CNCF also uh, kind of took steps towards standardizing, you know, Kubernetes because there mm -hmm. are so many vendors there doing, yep. doing your thing. Yep. So uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, so um, we've been very excited to work with, C with the CNCF at the Open Source Summit this year. Um, so at the end of the summer, we joined CNCF as a platinum member um, and announced a whole range of Kubernetes projects that we're uh, committing to. And uh, we have a set of engineers that are working on those Kubernetes projects. Uh, last month, uh, as part of that activity, there was a whole conformance uh, initiative around certified Kubernetes, and we were in the first wave of products uh, that were certified Kubernetes products that can now, uh, they're certified to run any application um, that is sort of that is Kubernetes, Kubernetes compliance. So there's uh, portability across Kubernetes environments. We talked about being cloud neutral, uh, being able to run on the on prem and in different clouds. And, and CNCF wants to commit to that as part of it, and we're part of that um, part of that solution. Um, in October at uh, Open World, uh, to that end, we announced our managed Kubernetes service, which is part of the container native application development platform. And the managed Kubernetes service is called Oracle Container Engine. And the Oracle Container Engine is what was certified Kubernetes compliant as of last month. And we were in that first wave there. Um, also in that container native application development stack, we've uh, built a seamless set of integrations on top of Kubernetes that include a CI CD service for continuous integration and delivery, and also a um, private registry service. So, you know, what we heard from customers, I mentioned they wanted something open and cloud neutral, but also something that integrates together in a seamless experience. So using open standards, but make it work together and deliver me something that has some consistency to it. So I'm not trying to assemble all these pieces myself. And that's kind of what we've, uh, we announced at Open World, our container native application development stack, which is now certified Kubernetes compliant, and which we did a bunch of announcements around here at the show today too, so. Uh, you mentioned earlier that, you know, when you started working with CNCF, you know, you're working on some projects. So which were those projects? Yeah, so uh, we've been working in sort of the container management world uh, for a while. Um, for, you know, Stack Engine was formed about four years ago here in Austin, Texas. And um, we, as it came, as we were acquired into, into Oracle, we just learned 
there was a huge amount of interest around DevOps technologies and the whole DevOps set of initiatives. Um, containers provide a way to hook DevOps together. It's kind of a killer application for DevOps. You can develop your application, the developer can deliver that container to QA, the QA can hand that off to staging, and it's a common artifact, the container that can go down the line. So, in the first couple years of this whole container wave, we saw a lot of adoption and push from Docker supporting developers, and sort of laptops, and, and doing a lot of development. AWS has got a lot of developer adoption too, in terms of getting developers off the ground and using containers. What we're seeing now in this last year is this whole wave around operationalization and DevOps. How do I take a container application and make it more production ready? How do I actually make it a scale, an auto scale, and deliver it across many multiple clouds? And that's where Kubernetes really came in and got us interested in Kubernetes. At the same time Kubernetes was picked up by the industry, it was the next logical progression as containers became more mature and became more productized, they needed to be able to manage the cluster. They needed to be able to do um, automated deployment. They needed to be able to do uh, blue-green deployments to get one running and, and have the other one swap out and, and, and provide a lot of these operational concerns that early on the developers don't really care about. They just want to develop code fast. But now I want to run that application. I want to run it across clusters. I want to make sure it runs up. as high availability. It runs all the time. So, uh, and that's why uh, Kubernetes has become such a important part of our, our platform and why we're supporting all the CNCF efforts to uh, make it a standard. So. And the next stage of uh, you know, engaging with pro projects is productization. So, and you said you, know, you announced some products here. Yep. So, so what are those uh, products? And uh, uh, the next will be, you know, once again, how do you ensure that uh, they do meet those you know, uh, you know, vendor neutral? Right. Yeah. Yep. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, I mentioned we had a, a set of announcements at, at Oracle Open World and Java One. Uh, uh, one of the other things we announced with our Container Native Application Development Platform was the FN Serverless Project. And this is an open source serverless project. It's called FN, letter F, little n. And this FN project allows us to um, you know, provide a, a set of contributions to the open source community um, in the serverless area. Uh, it's, it, FN can run in any project, any um, laptop, um, any cloud, you know, on-prem, um, public cloud, et cetera. And uh, it, uh, is something that we've now announced here that uh, there's a set of installations and, and a Helm chart that can run on top of Kubernetes. So the first uh, announcement here at the show is an FN installer for Kubernetes. Now FN, once again, is our open source serverless solution. We run that on top of Kubernetes. So now we have open on top of open. Uh, and one of the big requests we've heard, I mentioned people are looking for these open source, open standards uh, solutions. Um, the, the problem is, on the serverless side, that doesn't exist yet. So people have like chosen Docker standards, they've chosen Kubernetes standards, but now they're looking at what's next. How do I, I may be using AWS Lambda, but I'm kind of concerned about getting locked into AWS again, or locked into my cloud. So what's my open serverless solution? FN was our answer to that, and we said, we're committed to Kubernetes, let's put the FN installer on top of Kubernetes as a Helm chart which can then run FN as an open source solution on top of the open source standard for container management. Uh, so open, well integrated, like a Lego block, so they connect together very well. And if you run that on top of our cloud infrastructure, the Oracle cloud infrastructure, it's bare metal, it's high availability, and it's secure. So, um, so that was the first set of solutions, uh, the first solution that we uh, announced here at the show today. It kind of builds on that whole Kubernetes open story uh, builds in an open source serverless solution on top of that. Uh, so the second thing we announced was um, a global multi-cluster management. And there's a whole wave of interest and investment now happening at the Kubernetes project level around federation. The federation allows me to run multiple clusters in my own cloud, maybe across regions. Maybe I want to run it uh, across different clouds. I want to have run in you know, Google, one in AWS, and one in Oracle or I want to run a hybrid environment where I've got a, a Google cluster, a Kubernetes cluster on-prem and it went up in the cloud. So the, the issue then is that one of operational complexity. How do I manage that? It's hard enough to manage a set of clusters that are right next to me that I own and I manage all the time. And now I'm across cloud. Key issues come up around lifecycle management. How do I keep them all up to date? Um, how do I get one running and then uh, have it swap out in terms of a blue-green deployment? How do I do 
capacity management. You know, I don't want to have too much capacity here and not enough here, you know, underutilized here and, and, and unutilized over here. So I want to be able to spin up clusters on demand when I have application need. I want to be able to auto scale a cluster, um, but I want to do this on the basis of rules and policies that allow me to say, I want to run this cluster based upon cost. I want to run it based upon capacity, compliance, maybe regionality. I have a, a Kubernetes workload, a service I want to run, but I can only run that in, in, in country. So that kind of limits maybe, I want to run that on the cluster in my own country. Because uh, it's a, a government application. Or here's one that I want to run because it's, I want to run very cheaply, so find the cheapest alternative across my clouds to run it. So I want to have a, a business set of rules, an operational set of rules, and so that's what we've open sourced also. The second thing we've open sourced today is this global multi-cluster management, a set of open source tools for better management and operationalization of uh, federated cl clusters. So. But when you work on these projects, which turn into products, how do you engage with the, the, the community, you know, where you started with as a... Sure, oh yeah, yeah. Um, and this is something that you know, we as a team have been uh, committed to you know, as we started this, this, this uh, whole platform. Um, we have, our engineers are working on top of the, um, and with the uh, different SIGs, the special interest groups, the different projects. As a platinum member of CNCF, uh, we have a governing board presence, we have presence in different communities. So we're actively involved. Um, we've open sourced a whole set of utilities through the year um, that we brought back into the community. We go, we sponsor meetups, we go out to the community and work with all the teams. And the team that's working on this, a lot of us came from an open source environment, you know. Yes. So, you know, we came from a stack, stack engine was open source based and we um, were, were a startup. Uh, we acquired Worker recently, Iron.io uh, was brought in, uh, the team was acquired in. Iron.io was one of the original open source serverless solutions that are out there. So. Um, so all these teams kind of bring in a set of, um, kind of uh, a culture uh, that's used to using open source and working with the developer community, we're developers ourselves. And uh, you know, people look at us sometimes as Oracle going, you know, Oracle's doing open source, that doesn't make any sense. But in reality, or Oracle's been working on MySQL and Java and a whole bunch of open source components for a long time too. So. And while we're kind of a new breed and new DNA coming in, there's a lot of folks already inside of Oracle who are doing a lot of cool work too. So uh, we we found a lot of compatriots inside of Oracle that are you know, cheering on this whole open source initiative. So yeah, that's actually you raised a very interesting point there. Uh, you know, traditionally, Oracle, just like Microsoft, is seen as a proprietary company, and uh, the product that you mentioned, the Java or MySQL, that came through Sun Microsystems right. um, so right. acquisition. So, so what is the internal culture of Oracle, you know? Because now you have a lot of people who came from the yeah. open source community. Yeah. So is there a conflict within the Oracle or how does things work? No, I, I think uh, one thing Oracle does really well is listen to customers, right? And uh, if the customers are asking for open source solution, suddenly that's what we're going to do. And, and this is a mandate. So. Um, and you know, I, I talk, we work with developers, but we also talk to CIOs and lead architects and uh, you know, uh, directors of IT. And, and you know, from the top down and bottom up, there's a consistent interest around um, moving an open source stack you know, that's enterprise grade, that's integrated, and all those things that we're looking for uh, based upon open standards. But they want to be able to run that you know, you know, anywhere they want to. They want to have that flexibility. So, um, you know, so customers are asking for it, they're demanding it. Uh, you know, developers have kind of spoken. You know, they're kind of the, the new the new champions, and you want to make your developers happy. Um, and, a, and a lot of teams in, in enterprises and even inside inside at Oracle are trying to adopt this whole DevOps culture. It's not just technology; it's about culture. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. and so the, that culture is important, and the technology can support it. But um, the culture is built upon a lot of these open source components and being able to use things that provide the flexibility and allow you to do your job in, a, in the most effective way to recruit developers in and keep them. And those, these are the kind of tools and technologies people want to have and want to work with too. So, um, so I think uh, we found a very kind of an open environment by which we can actually, uh, you know, the, the culture's open to these kind of ideas now. And, uh, and part of it is just the reality of the market that we're in. People want it and therefore, you know, if we don't answer that, um, that need, you know, we, we don't move forward in terms of what's happening in the cloud today, too. So, right. so, so when we do talk about culture, uh, let's say uh, uh, you are now, you know, contributing to a lot of open source projects. So, 
what is the internal process? Let's say a developer is uh, either contributing to an open source project using Oracle email ID, or somebody wants to use a code from a project. So what is the internal process which mm -hmm. makes it easier for the developer to yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so um, you know, as part of kind of this cultural change, we've, all, we've worked with the, the legal teams, et cetera, that can help us, and they become a lot more flexible in how you work with open source. Um, and you know, we have leads and open source leads and project leads uh, that are you know, the lead contributors that can help you know, work people through the process and, and make it grease the skids to get things done. So um, there's still protocol and process you have to go through because this is a big company and you want to make sure you're following the proper rules. But uh, we've been surprised at the, you know, the culture that they're, they're kind of meeting in the middle. You know? So it's not, the extremes are not there. You can't just do everything you want to do, but it's definitely not you know, the way it used to be. So, um, and once again, I thought a lot of that's driven by the, the realities of technology and the market and where things are going and um, in trying to be as modern as possible in how we approach, approach these problems. So it's been, um, we've seen a, a ton of growth even over the last two years since we've been in Oracle, and we expect to see even more going forward too. So. Uh, anything else you would like to highlight that we missed and we should have talked about today? No, I think we've, uh, you know, it's been a, a full year of, of you know, committing to this open source environment. Open standards are critical to us. Um, you know, finding a way to deliver this open integrated solution was a, was a, a big push for us. We did that at, at Open World in, at, in October this year. Um, since then, we've been certified Kubernetes compliant. We've uh, released a whole bunch of new components here at the show, and you know, the, it's, the future's wide open. Next year is going to be pretty exciting, uh, and we look forward to you know telling more of the story and you know working with the whole community as we go through it. So, um, thanks for your time. Thanks for your time too. It was nice talking to you both. And now back to our audiences. Thanks for watching. Listen to more episodes of the News Tech Makers at thenewstech.io/podcasts. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.